The Apple event has finished and one of the devices that I was excited for the most in 2022 was a more affordable Apple display which is actually something that I mentioned in my top tech for 2022 video. Well, that's exactly what we got with Apple's new studio display, but it is a bit of an odd one. And I actually found 15 things that you need to be aware of before buying this display. Number one, the price is very weird. So it costs $1,600, which compared to Apple's Pro Display XDR, which costs 5,000, seems like a great deal. Now, the iMac, the M1, starts from $1,300. So this display is $300 more than the iMac. But it's not an iMac. It's just a display that is three inches bigger than the iMac's display, but the overall quality of the panel is almost identical. So you're technically paying $300 more for three extra inches and no iMac inside. But I think what's even more shocking is that when you compare it against the 27 inch iMac, which Apple is no longer selling by the way, so the display size is the same in this case, that iMac went for $200 more. So it seems like compared to that, uh, you only had to pay $200 more and get literally a full computer and accessories in the box, which the Apple Studio display does not include. Then number two, Apple Silicon. Yes, this display has an Apple chip inside, which a lot of the leaks and rumors have been pointing at. Now, I was expecting to see an M1 Pro or even an M1 Max uh, inside such a display, which would be the uh, next gen Apple Pro Display XDR. And I was assuming uh, this chip to be able to accelerate your Mac's performance even further, sort of like uh, an eGPU. But instead of that, we got the Apple A13 Bionic chip, the same one found in the iPhone 11. So what does this do? Does it boost the performance? What is its role? Well, its role is to process the audio and the video coming from the monitor. Essentially, you get a better webcam experience and better microphones. But the weird thing is that today, if you buy a MacBook with Apple Silicon and you connect it to LG's ultra-fine 5K display, for example, you automatically get better image processing and better audio processing and true tone and stuff like that, thanks to the Apple Silicon inside your MacBook. So it's super weird that they added this to the monitor when your Mac can already do this by itself. And that's because number three, you need to be aware of which devices this monitor supports. Uh, it supports Intel Macs, basically any Mac with a Thunderbolt 3 port. So that means 2016 and newer MacBook Pros, the 2018 MacBook Air, 2018 Mac Mini, 2017, 27 inch iMac, anything with Thunderbolt 3, which means that a lot of the unique features that this monitor has also work on Intel Macs. On top of that, this monitor works with iPads too. You do need to have an iPad that has a Thunderbolt port, so iPad Pros or the fifth gen iPad Air. However, the USB-C ports on the back of the monitor would only support USB 2 data speeds when connected to an iPad. Now, in terms of some of those unique features, one of them is the advanced front camera, which is built in unlike the Pro Display XDR, uh, it's also a 12 megapixel camera with an ultra wide lens. So this is actually the exact same front camera as the iPad Pro, which means that we actually get center stage, which is great for video calls as it can track you around the scene. We also get advanced microphones. So we get a three mic array with directional beamforming, which is the exact same one as we get on the new 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now those had exceptional audio quality. You could even use them to record a voiceover. Uh, obviously, it was not as great as a dedicated mic, but it was impressively close. Which means that combined with that front-facing camera, uh, this display would be a great option for video calls. Number six, this is a strange one. So the monitor itself actually has Hey Cindy support, which all modern Macs already support. Now, this is thanks to the Apple A13 chip that's inside. Again, likely a feature for older Macs, as any Mac that does not have Apple Silicon or the uh, T2 chip, which was introduced back in 2018, will not have Hey Cindy. For example, if you have a 2016 MacBook Pro that is supported by this monitor, you could get Hey Cindy support if you just buy the Apple Studio display. Number seven, Apple's calling this the best audio experience on a Mac. And that's because you get six speakers inside. You get four noise cancelling woofers and two high performance tweeters with spatial audio support as well. So if you didn't have any speakers for your Mac, this is actually a really good option. Number eight, let's talk about connectivity because this monitor actually has a couple of ports on the back. So 
So we have one Thunderbolt 3, not four, interesting enough. And this is what you use to connect to your Mac. And then you have three USB Type-C ports, which are now 10 gigabit per second ports, which are great for connecting external hard drives or any other peripherals. Sadly, it does not have an HDMI port, meaning that you cannot connect this to a PC. Well, if it does have a Thunderbolt port, you can, but if it's just generic USB Type-C, you won't be able to. This is mostly a Mac monitor only. What I do like about a Thunderbolt port here is that uh, it provides up to 96 watts of power output, meaning that you can fully power up a 16-inch MacBook Pro or even fast charge a 14-inch model. Number nine, you also get some reference modes. So the Pro Display XDR already has this, the new 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros do too, and long story short, you can easily switch between color spaces and brightness levels to match the content that you're working with. This is great for some professional video editors that have very specific requirements for their projects. Number 10, we have the brightness levels. So all of Apple's previous Macs, so the MacBook Pros, the iMacs, uh, the LG Ultra Fine Display had a brightness of 500 nits, which is actually very bright as most PC monitors have between 350 to 400, usually 350. And 500 that Apple was offering was a major upgrade. Here at work, I have a Dell U2720Q, an amazing monitor, uh, which is next to my LG Ultrafine 5K. So that's 500 nits, uh, the Dell is 400. And I can easily tell the difference between the two. The Dell looks very dim compared to the LG. Apple Studio Display has 600 nits. And interesting enough, this is actually not an HDR. So Apple's Pro Display XDR has 1600 nits and uh, the new MacBook Pro has also 1600 nits peak, but only in HDR. So if you're just watching standard content, both would only display 500 nits. And this is what I usually do. I only uh, watch standard content. And for me, for 99% of my work, the studio display would be brighter than even Apple's Pro Display XDR. Number 11, when you order this monitor, you actually have two different panel options. So the standard is glossy, which I absolutely love because the image would be super, super sharp. And then you also have a nano texture coating uh, which is basically a matte version of it, which doesn't create uh, that haziness that other matte monitors have. So most PC monitors, even 4K ones, have a matte texture, essentially a plastic layer above the display, which decreases clarity very noticeably in order to minimize the reflections. Uh, reason why I personally prefer glossy monitors. Fortunately, Apple is pretty much the only one who makes them. Now, when I went to the Apple store and I saw the Pro Display XDR in person with that nano textured glass, it looked good, but still not as sharp as the glossy option. So personally, I would still say just go with glossy, unless uh, the monitor is going to be in front of a window and you would get a ton of direct sunlight on it. Oh, and if you pick the nano textured glass option, you would also get an Apple cleaning cloth in the box. If you get a standard glass, that will not be included. Number 12, you actually get three different stand options. So the default is an iMac-like stand, which means that you can tilt it 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. Yeah, not a lot of adjustments. The second one is a tilt and height adjustable stand, which actually costs $300 extra. And the only difference is that you can raise it. It has a counterweight, which just like on the Pro Display XDR means that it would feel weightless when you adjust it and you'll be able to even adjust it with only the touch of a finger, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, it doesn't support rotation like the Pro Display XDR stand does, which is a shame. And then the third one is the vase amount, which doesn't cost anything extra. Uh, you can mount it on any traditional vase amounts uh, and you'll be able to rotate it that way. Uh, of course, you need a desk that supports that. And the sad thing is that you can't really switch them out. So whatever you pick when you buy the monitor is what you'll get. 13, we also get some new accessories that go really well with this new monitor. So there's a new keyboard, which comes in silver and black essentially just like the Mac Pro one, uh, but now you can buy it separately and it has those rounded corners and touch ID. There's a new Magic Mouse, which has a black top and silver frame, and the new Magic Trackpad with a black top, silver frame, and rounded corners. Perfectly matching the studio display's design, so if you have a home office, then uh, those would be uh, pretty good accessories to get to complete the look. Okay, number 14, how does this new Mac Studio display compare to Apple's other display, the Pro Display XDR? Well, the biggest difference is, of course, the price, $1,500 compared to $5,000. Uh, the Pro Display XDR does have dimming zones, 576 of them, meaning that uh, you can actually get much better contrast on the Pro Display XDR and much deeper blacks than uh, on Apple Studio Display. You also have a much higher brightness, 1600 nits, but again, that's only in HDR and that's the peak brightness. 
You also get a bigger panel, 32 inches versus 27, thinner bezels, which I do actually like, uh, and then the option of a stand with rotation adjustments, but that is $1,000 extra though. But then the Cedar display gives you a camera, microphones, speakers, 100 nit higher brightness and SDR, which is probably gonna be most of your use cases, uh, and then a thinner overall form factor. And 15, how does it actually compare against LG's ultrafine 5K display? Now, if you're not familiar with this monitor, this was actually one that was made in partnership between Apple and LG. It was launched in 2016, so with the introduction of the previous gen MacBook Pros, um, and it actually uses the exact same panel as the 27-inch iMac, so the quality of this is just outstanding. Now, when Apple did sell this, they sold it for $1,300, so $300 less than the Apple Studio display. Now, the Studio display is 100 nits brighter. Uh, the USB-C ports on the back are 10 gigs compared to just 5 on this one. Uh, camera is better on the Studio display, uh, the mics are better, the speakers, LG had these, but they were pretty, pretty poor. Uh, and of course, the design is better on the Studio. But is it actually worth $300 more? I would say no. So I would suggest try and find an LG Ultrafine 5K. Uh, on eBay, they go for almost half the price of the studio display. And this is honestly the best alternative. Overall, I do like what this display brings to the table. I like its design, its features, but I'm very disappointed with its price. I would have easily traded off the speakers, the camera, uh, the microphones, hey, Cindy support, and all of that for a more affordable price point because at the end of the day, this is a monitor, right? And this is what people want the most. Not necessarily the speakers and all the extra features that just increase the price point. But let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? We'll be getting it in the studio next week, so definitely subscribe for hands-on content. Um, and also stay tuned for individual videos on every single one of those announcements from the event. Mac Studio, iPhone SE, all that good stuff. Stay tuned to the channel. I'm Daniel. This has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.